Hello. How are you? A few weeks ago, I introduced a project called The Reverent Silence, a webcomic that I've been working on since early 2021, so it's been quite a while now. In that last video, I talked about the general premise and how The Reverent Silence came to be. So now it's time to introduce the main characters! Yay! Finally! I will be introducing the cast two at a time, starting with the protagonists, and it's only right to be starting with THE main characters. So if you're interested, make sure to like and subscribe, grab some popcorn, and strap your butts in because here we go! Let's kick things off with the star of the show. Nadia Yefremovna is the main character of The Reverent Silence, and is an officer of the Blackfeld Investigation Bureau's first company. She is an automaton, and not only is she an automaton, she is a very rare reverent automaton. I still haven't figured out what the odds would be in that scenario, but a reverent automaton is very hard to come by and even harder to create for a number of reasons. But the irony is, Nadia wasn't created with the intention to carry reverence or anything mimicking it. Nadia came into being several centuries ago in the nation of Vyatka, the Land of Balance, which is also named after a river in Russia, but that's besides the point. She was originally an average automaton, so basically an android or some sort of mechanical being with no magic capabilities, but gained reverence after an incident that should have destroyed her. A mechanist from the north of Nadia's homeland gave her a crystallized human heart that once belonged to a mortal reverent. And it's worth mentioning now that reverence originates in the heart, which in the world of the reverent silence is viewed as the source of all ambition. As for how that mechanist ended up with a literal human heart in his possession… That's a spoiler. Sorry. Either way though, it's a good thing he had it on him because Nadia's heart is quite literally the only thing keeping her alive. Sometime after being revived, Nadia entered the Vyatkan monarchy as part of an all-reverent regiment called the Eagle Guard. An unknown incident, however, caused her to leave the Eagle Guard and Vyatka entirely, which is how she found her way to Blackfeld and ultimately the Blackfeld Investigation Bureau. Nadia has been in the Investigation Bureau longer than her colleagues in the first company, and served the previous head commissioner long before the current head commissioner took their place. Nadia is a curious and investigative individual, constantly running her own calculations to determine the best course of action in a situation, especially while investigating. When she's not working a case though, she can be quite oblivious, and despite having been around for a long time, still doesn't quite understand people. The mystery of her heart's origins has taken precedence over all else, and soon after Don Rye's counseling associates arrives in Blackfeld, Nadia sees a much needed opportunity. Because she's got someone else's heart keeping her functional, Nadia will occasionally get some kind of nasty side effects, and once in a blue moon she'll get flashbacks of someone else's life. That's someone else being the original owner of her heart. No spoilers, but with the amount of time the heart had spent away from its owner, the integrity of the memories deteriorated, so Nadia can't get much of a lead just going off the memories. And she has tried. The reverence of the heart's original owner also transferred to Nadia as a result of the transplant, though Nadia's reverence is far weaker than what it used to be. Nadia's reverence in the early days of production was referred to as exorcism. It's not wrong, but I'm also not sure how well it fits with the nature of her power. Nadia can purify negative energy and negate its effects, but she can also condense her energy into a solid-like state and use the allocated energy as a form of weaponry that can cut through swaths of negative energy in an instant. She can't completely negate the effects of negative energy, however, and she cannot be in an area with a powerful negative presence. In other words, if there is enough negative energy in the vicinity, it can nullify the effects of Nadia's reverence and put her in serious danger. The usage of Nadia's reverence is also limited, and she can only draw unlimited amounts of energy at a time. Now, the phrase negative energy can apply to the energy admitted by shades or the spirits of the restless dead. On the other hand, the term negative, in regards to reverence specifically, is somewhat broad, though it can be used to refer to reverence that is fundamentally corrosive or destructive. Reverence is capable of evolution, and I have an idea of where I'm going to take Nadia's powers as the story progresses, but how it evolves is also a spoiler, so I'll just leave it there for now. What I will say is that the reverence of someone who isn't living is usually in permanent stasis, but there is always a possibility of… unconventional evolution. Nadia's creation and the creation of the reverent silence's building block, so to speak, occurred at around the same time. As I said, some of what went into the foundation of the story came to me in a dream. I'm a normal person, I promise. A couple of weeks after I got the very first ideas for the Reverent Silence, I drew Nadia for the first time. 
As you can see, her first design wasn't that much different from her final design, and she was one of the characters whose design I nailed pretty early on. I only made several moderate changes to her clothes, like changing her boots and the shape of her pendant, and giving her several accessories, including her belt. Just to give a bit more spice to her design. I don't know, maybe that's just a me thing. As you can see, Nadia also had teal eyes and teal colored accessories, but I made them yellow later on so her color scheme would be a little more cohesive, and also to match the fact that the color of her reverence is gold. I also gave her an actual sword at first, but in the end, I gave her one built completely from her aura. I knew Nadia was going to be some kind of not human, at least not an ordinary one. I don't remember where along the line exactly I made her an automaton, but once that happened, a lot of lore-related bits fell into place, including her inextricable ties with someone in the main cast that I can't really talk about now because she's a bit of a walking spoiler. But hopefully that gives you something to think about. Nadia's character arc is an interesting one, as much of it entails her figuring out how she got to where she is today and understanding her place in the grand scheme of things. Again, since she survived an incident that she should not have survived. Nadia is an interesting protagonist to write about for this reason, and her interactions with the main cast are also fun to think about, since she's basically the force that holds all of the main protagonists together. And she also plays a major role in the past, present, and future of the lore. Well, as a protagonist should. But there's also a reason for that beyond Nadia's protagonist role, if that makes any sense. Anyway, that's everything I have to say about Nadia, so let's move on to the other character that I'll be covering for this video. The Blackfelt Investigation Bureau handles all sorts of crime-related cases, but the Bureau's first company consists of the Bureau's senior enforcers. There are ten brain cells among the entire group, and half of those brain cells belong to Safia Batur, captain of the first company and head commissioner of the Bureau. Safia oversees all of the affairs that go on in the Bureau and sends all of the orders to each of the Bureau's seven companies as she sees fit. However, she still answers directly to the Lord Chancellor of the Nation of Rotir, aka the Land of Wisdom, of which Blackfelt is the capital city. Born in Sartak, the Land of Mercy, Safia is the oldest of five siblings and was accepted to the Reverent Seminary of Rotir, basically magical magic school for especially gifted reverence, when she turned 16. There, she met two people that she would become very close to, but a few years later, she would lose one of those friends to a horrific accident. As for the other, she would go on to establish a little counseling group called Donrise Counseling Associates. Sophia was an understudy for the previous head commissioner of the Blackfield Investigation Bureau for several years, having been scouted for her talent and her high marks during her time at the seminary. Sophia stayed mostly out of sight during that time, but when the previous head commissioner was killed on an assignment, Sophia took their place. Sophia has only been head commissioner for four years, but she has great confidence in herself and what she does. As is her right, Sophia takes her job very seriously. She doesn't like when people waste her time, and she is not someone who tolerates nonsense. Safia has a bit of a perfectionist, get to the bottom of the matter as quickly as possible kind of personality, but also has a bit of a sarcastic, snarky streak to her. Because of past events that I can't get into because of spoilers, she does have a hard time letting go of certain things, and her rivalry with Marielle is clear proof of that. Despite that, however, she is very protective of the people she cares about, including her peers. She puts her job and the safety of the people of Blackfeld above everything else, sometimes to a fault and she has a tendency to be hard on herself if something goes bad or if she fails to protect whatever she was supposed to. So, Safia's reverence. Safia's reverence was inspired by alchemy, specifically the act of transmutation, which is changing a substance from one form or state into another. In her case specifically, this means changing inorganic materials like rocks and metal by rearranging their molecular structures to create a superior product, from stone to platinum, for example. However, Sophia cannot change organic matter like trees or living tissue. That power belongs to someone else. She also can't change inorganic matter into organic matter and vice versa. There was a chemistry experiment that I did when I was in high school where we performed some form of alchemy by turning the surface of a penny from copper to gold via several scientific processes. Sophia's reverence has a similar concept, but she can change the entire structure of an object as opposed to just the surface. It's not just Safia's reverence that was inspired by alchemy. Her design also has a number of alchemical motifs, from the patterns on her dress to the pupils of her eyes, which are actually the alchemical symbol for Earth. And I think it was pretty fitting for her since one of the things she can transform is rocks and also metal, and most other things that can qualify as being under the Earth element. Safia came shortly after Nadia's creation. Originally she was human, but I made the decision to give her dragon-like traits later on. I think it was the idea of a dragon alchemist lady that latched onto my brain like a vice and never let go. 
I specifically based Safia on the Evren, which were dragons in Turkic mythology and symbols of might and power. The Evren are said to secrete flames from their tails, but Safia doesn't, so some creative liberties were taken. Though I have considered having some crystalline particles circle around her tail whenever she uses her reverence. You won't see it in the visual here, but it's been a fun thing to consider nonetheless. And as I said, reverence is capable of evolution, so never say never, I guess. I knew from the moment I created her that Sophia had to have something alchemy related in terms of her power, which then gave rise to the alchemical motifs in her design. I also looked at clothing from the Ottoman Empire circa the 1890s, since that's where I took inspiration for Sophia's homeland. Sophia's design took a couple of tries to get right, and even when I got her first character sheet down, I still wasn't quite satisfied with it. So she went back to the drawing board, and I'm pretty happy with her current design. I stated earlier that Nadia's color scheme was meant to be more in line with the color of her reverence, and this is also the case with a lot of the cast, but Safia is a notable exception to this. Her design is mostly reds and whites, but the color of her reverence is actually silver. There's a few reasons for this, actually. The first being that there's another main character with a red aura, and I didn't want their reverence colors to be too similar, especially since they're in the same group. And also, it's a nice little contrast between her and the other protagonist, Nadia. Like, gold and silver and stuff like that. Safia is more of a mentor figure to the other protagonists, being that she is their boss, but also the captain of their company as well. I'd say the first company is a rather tight-knit group that came together by way of them having similar jobs, but also having been united under life-changing circumstances. And I like to imagine that this is what brought the four of them closer. I like the idea of four individuals working together while also leaning on each other as they navigate the world and their day-to-day -day lives while also having a suspect magical counseling group to deal with. But I guess that's a typical Tuesday afternoon. Safia herself has a lot of reckoning with her past to do, and she also has a lot of dirty laundry to air out. Not just with her rival Marielle, or even with Nadia. Again, there are spoiler reasons for that, but I'm just going to leave it at... I can't wait to put them all through the ringer. But that's everything I have to say about Safia, and that's also going to do it for the first episode of this series. I'm so excited to finally talk more about this project, and to talk about the cast because there's a lot that I wanted to say, but also wanted to save it for the introduction videos. The second episode of this series will be up in the coming weeks, focusing on the other two protagonists. So if you like this video and you want to see that, make sure to like and subscribe and also follow me on my social media accounts. Also, if you want, you can share this video to spread the joy of rambling about characters that have taken up all your brain cells. In this case, it's my brain cells, but hopefully you get what I mean. And one more thing. If you want to support me further, then please check out my Kofi as well as my Etsy shop, both of which are also in the description. Thanks for watching, and let's now take a moment to appreciate the finished character visuals.